Hello YouTube, this is the Eye of Stone. This is a walkthrough of Return to the Cathedral, which is the ninth mission of the the Dark Project. This level is uh, played on expert, and my commentary is added after the fact. There is a mission-critical reading, but uh, on this occasion, Garrett actually reads it aloud, so I'm just going to leave it to him, and I'm not going to show that beforehand, so here we go. There it is, the classic facade. I like this view, too. It's no easy out. It should have been obvious. So, you are returning with a talisman to Claraman. I did not think it likely that you would succeed. Quite an opener. Now, this is one of the scariest moments of my life came. The first time I played this level, I made a lot of noise on the middle of the lift here. You can see how slow I'm going. I opened this door, and that door at the end of the hall, and this is permanently burned into my mind. I made so m I managed to make so much noise in so short amount of time. That door opened, and all hell was on the other side of it. All the haunts and a bunch of zombies. It was too much. I pressed escape and restarted the level, but I will never forget hearing the haunts riled up the first time. I must have, like, hopped trying to get up on one of the ledges, you know, in these uh, two anterooms. These rooms that we're going into now, that is. I must have been trying to hop up onto one of the two ledges, even though the door up there is barricaded, but I guess I made a fair amount of noise, but they heard it all right. I didn't figure the sound would carry as well as it did. There's a little piece of loot. You want to floss right here? I'm having a little trouble selecting it. It's usually not this difficult. There we go. Now, we're going to go through here. We have a door to unlock. And then we have a ladder to climb and a zombie to take care of. It's interesting that you can destroy this zombie, and he really is in the way if you don't, and not alert all the death in the main chapel, but on this occasion, as long as the doors of these long hallways are closed, you can make all the noise you want. Hearing the eye being like, come here, that was like a whoa the first time, too. See, you can hear it, these uh, various sound flourishes. The haunts will not have heard that amazingly. Once I uh, have secured the eye, you will notice me get pretty aggressive with the haunts, and that is because playing it on expert towards the end of the level, it's either expert or hard, I forget which, uh, you will be required to actually destroy all the haunts. So I kind of do it as I go along, just taking it in stride and digestible bites. And that includes being incredibly cheap in two instances. Because as my video Haunts 3 Imperfection shows, 
Engaging multiple haunts is a most excellent way to get yourself killed. I always thought this bell was beautiful and dramatically with that noise. You have to be careful with that haunt down there. You can set all the undead off prematurely. Now, see, he's very twitchy. Now, playing this level on Expert does imply that I've played this before, so I know a thing or two. So, what you're going to see me do now would not make sense from a common sense perspective if you hadn't played this level before, but it's going to save me a lot of time and hassle later. I am basically going to take Brother Martello here, and I am going to move him somewhere else. And I will explain why I'm doing this when the time is right. <clears throat> or I won't even need to myself. <clears throat> if you haven't played <clears throat> Thief, or you're not to this point in the game yet, this is a... Uh, if there is a most iconic level in Thief, there is probably not a most iconic level, but there's probably like a top three or a top five. E even for the trilogy, a top ten might be pushing it a bit, but this is probably within the top three most iconic levels of the trilogy. It was not until the Shale Bridge Cradle that we got something comparable to this level. Um, due to differences in tone and style, oddly enough, uh, Thief 2 did not offer a terrifying level. Thief 2 excelled in other... in, in terms of other um, genres, themes. Thief 2 wasn't trying to be scary. And that was a... Uh, of course, no one remembers it now, but that was kind of a wish that the fans had after Thief the Dark Project. A, 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 a wish was that there would kind of be more levels in Thief 2 where it featured Garrett versus living human opponents, not the undead and not as many magical beasts. There was a thought that you know a thief is supposed to uh, a thief is a human who steals things from other humans, and uh, had this game strayed a bit from that too much. I don't think so. You get wonderful instances in this game of it's Garrett versus the living, take assassins or. Even though some weird things go on, the sword or Lord Bafford's manor or Craig's cleft, I don't think it was lacking in Garrett vs. the Living. That said, th again, there's a lot of stuff like this. I don't mind Garrett vs. the Undead at all. Things like the Lost City or the Sunken Citadel can get a bit distracting after a while. But they're necessary. It's it's necessary to do something different. So Where are you going? Have you come all this way? Only to leave me. These stairs as I go days. With your grasp. The one time you can actually make the eye nervous. So now that I've done that, I'm going to do it all over again with brother, uh, uh, brother Renault.
That's not the proper pronunciation of his name. He has a French name. That will be clarified later. Don't engage the ghost in the water. You make a ton of noise splashing through the water. Come over here and overhead swing him from behind. You'll kill him in two hits. An overhead swing and a slash should be sufficient. And we will deal with the zombie in due time. Also, don't do what you just saw me do. Don't swing your sword around randomly. That's a bad habit of mine. And, uh... No, that did bother the zombie. Don't swing your sword around the way you saw me doing that, because it's, uh... Many's the time I've, uh... been... relying on stealth and uh, ambushing overhead swing from behind, and I will like bang something metallic and make a lot of noise and ruin it for myself. So let's fire up the generator. Let's turn on the lights. This uh, wine cellar, it's really kind of creepy that he like died in here and you're just going in there and getting him. It's like, why is he not a zombie himself? This basement really is a master stroke of level design. It's just exquisite at what it does. And I just found the most important room of it. That safe that I didn't bother opening is empty. It's where the Hammerites were storing the eye. Now be careful here. You see that and you see that. You don't want those on your head. There's actually another instance of an overhead trap uh, like that in St. Yora's, which is the uh, dormitory part of this level. I don't believe I actually set the falling rocks in St. Yora's off, so I'll just mention that they exist. But I may set them off, I forget. Now... turns out, as this playthrough will demonstrate, I thought that there was only one haunt going between the courtyard and St. Yora's, but as I discover later, there is another haunt doing a roaming patrol in St. Yora's. Later, after I kill the haunt that I'm about to kill right now. Kill is probably not even the right word, is it? Destroy.
destroy. That just sounds so flat. So again, you know, playing on Expert, this is kind of a doozy of a level. It's, uh... This was just one of those little opportunities that's too tempting to pass up. I need to be able to get to and fro St. Yoras without... I'm just gonna go do other things for now and let all the people out there calm down a bit. I'll take that haunt out later. That was just too good to pass up. You know, when is the actual proper time to use a mine if you're going to use it? most cases, if you get the mine positioned right, you can take out two enemies at once. At least. So I decided to go ahead and acquire the eye. get a bunch of momentum going because this is an uphill jump. I call that a fair trade. Yes, I am out of flash bombs, but all three of those haunts had to go, so they're gone. It didn't cause those zombies to explode. This is the other hallway on this level. I just, there's nothing here, but I just wanted, you know, for the purpose of a walkthrough, I just figured I'd show it to you. All three of those haunts had to go anyway, and, uh, well, let me show you this. I'll wait till the doors close, but there's something to see here. Leaving so soon. I think that would be too easy. These doors I sealed once again. You have to find another way. Now, how am I going to get out of here? All three of those haunts have to go, and I assure you, taking on engaging three haunts is no picnic. It can be done, but you'll be 90% dead by the time it's over if you survive, which you probably won't. If you do pull it off, it'll probably take a bunch of tries. That may sound snide, but it's a risk I'll take. Okay, here is Brother Morris. Welcome to the majestic and splendid Hammer Cathedral. How pleasing to welcome new initiates into our fold. I am Brother Muris, and I will be thy spiritual guide. I see that thou art tired from your journey, so I'll leave thee be. But if thou needst my help, I can be found down in the cloister.
Aha, our newest acolyte. Thou seems to have gotten thyself into some trouble, hmm? And from the looks of thee, I'd say thou art used to trouble. Well, I can help thee escape this desolate place, if thou wilt help me with something. Since thou clearly camest here to collect things, thou canst start by collecting some things for me. All brothers have rosary beads, so thou need some too. Thou canst borrow mine. I think I left them in my room. I remember that it was so nice to look out over the fountain in the garden. So be a good lad and bring me my rosary. As though it were as simple as that. Now, let's just thin the ranks of the Midnight Watch here. Again, playing on Expert at some point, Brother Murris will ask you to destroy all the Hammer Haunts. And I just don't care to do that just because he says so, since I know he's gonna do it. <coughs> so now everybody's all upset. Welcome to St. Yora's. Saint himself, Saint Yora. This is one of those areas where you're probably not actually safe from a zombie's attack. This this uh, monastic dormitory is absolutely crawling with zombies. That slowed down, processed bell sound is kind of relaxing, kind of meditative. So you gotta do your baseline observation, figure out where they're going. Run. really easy to get hung up on a bed or a piece of furniture in a situation like that. I'm kind of surrounded right now. So the only thing to do is to take five and start play and start playing a conservative game. Or you're just gonna get yourself pummeled. It's the kitchen. play with that meat cleaver, but So I still have to get his rosary. You know, a couple pieces of loot in here. A couple pieces of loot to floss out, but... I'm really the man of the hour right now.
Alright, so it's in this room. There we go. There's the falling rocks. You want to avoid those. It's like, where is it? Okay. Here's where his rosary is. It was that kind of central room in the upstairs where the falling rock trap is, but I didn't set it off. Unlike the basement, there's no reason to risk getting smashed. taken him down yet, have I? No wonder he's still there. That makes perfect sense now. Aha, what a wonderful looter thou art. Thou hast found my rosary. I have some other things for thee to do as well. I needs for thou to get a holy symbol. This place is not as holy as it once was, I'm afraid, so thou might have a hard time finding one. Thou canst always make one for thyself in the tenor factory. We do it all the time and praise the builder for his works. This place is not as holy as it once was. Well, gee, that was just the understatement of the level. Is there something disdainful, Brother Morris, about us? Hey, Garrett. Alright. Goodbye, Mr. Ghost. As I said during the mission, the Haunted Cathedral, the ghosts are easily the most annoying opponent. They have a ton of endurance, they run, they can shoot you a lot of the times while you're goring them with the sword. And they Art thou noise. still poking around for a holy symbol? There might not be any to find any longer. Why dost thou not go to the factory and make one for thyself? Yes, Murus. Now, you have to keep yourself moving straight here or you'll get hung up. See? It's a very narrow space. Now, I make a mistake here. There are haunts in St. Vale's, the library. And I very cheaply ambush one from behind. And in a few minutes, you're going to see me get a rude surprise. It has been a while since I've done this level. So, my count was a bit rusty. getting him out of the way. Not that I think it matters with the undead. I don't think they care about dead bodies, but I could be wrong, so... Good habit. To... Now, here I accidentally... This is uh, Saint Vale. He has the beautiful stained glass on the side of his tomb. Here's the book you need to read later. I accidentally read it and the screen will go black for just a second. <sighs> and I'm like, oh shit, right now. Because I was not expecting now. For the first of the two haunts who show up, I'm going to be a cheap camping scumbag and take him out with arrows, which is a really pathetic way to take out a haunt. But I will atone for it by engaging the second haunt 
in a personal combat. With a zombie to bother me while I do it. There is holy water somewhere in this level, but I hadn't acquired it yet. That would have been the thing to do in this situation since I have no shortage of water arrows. Although I use the holy water for another task later. There's actually two holy waters, if memory serves. I mean, I just played this level, and here I am doing the commentary. And already I'm fuzzy. That can't be a good sign. But we'll see what I do in a few minutes. So yes, I'm camping. Okay. If you haven't played Thief, I would not advise trying this yet. Especially with the zombie there to potentially complicate things, I made that look a bit easier than it is. Did you see how fast the haunt was moving? I mean, once you're an experienced player, it's no problem at all. I'm not trying to come off all high and mighty because I killed a haunt with a sword. I still wouldn't describe taking on a haunt as easy. It's just ecumenically difficult. It doesn't matter how good you get in the game. I have a lot of experience fighting haunts, but sometimes I kill them, sometimes they kill me. Whether it's one of them or two of them. If they get you in a corner, if they get you in a corner here, big trouble. I had a nice long route of slow retreat if I needed it. This is St. Tenor. And the fire arrows that are here are going to come in handy. So we just made ourselves a holy symbol. Now we have to bless it. I just like to do that. Don't ask me why. All right, now, rather than have our dear friend, the brother, ask for this candle, I'm just gonna get it now. <gasps> now, I just came back here to think for a moment at this point. Um, I needed to, uh, I needed to sort out the sequ my next sequence of events. Um, there was a certain order I could have done things in, and I just needed to take a pause here for like 15 or 20 seconds, whatever it is, to, to just figure out how I was going to do it on this occasion. So off we go. I don't actually think you can, I think maybe the only way to get back onto that is if you jump onto the roof of the shed, but even that might not work. So I just use the ladder. Obviously, it can't be too hard to take out a haunt if destroying all of them is given as a mission goal. It's just not a picnic. In the expert version of this level, at, compared to the normal, compared to this level on the normal difficulty level, the expert version really drags. You think you're done working for the venerable brother, but he keeps coming up with things for you to do. The 
key is worth it. In fact, I think the key may have an option. I don't know if you can pick the cemetery gates. And this is St. Gentle. Now, there's a zombie in one of these rooms, and I'm going to waste a fire arrow on him. Just because I want to. There's another fire arrow in the door, just beyond the door on the right, that we're going to go into in a minute. <laughs> Maybe a bit excessive. Now the haunted door can't close because the zombie gibbs are blocking it. It's kind of funny to hear it try to close and try to close and try to close. Eventually the gibbs disappear and the door is able to close, I think. There we go. No, Jonas, that's the cemetery key that will not work here. if you want to, but I skip it. <coughs> now we have a blessed holy symbol. Now to satisfy the goal that will be forthcoming if we don't head it off, we have to descend into the winter tunnels defeat uh, what actually turns out to be the second to last haunt. Usually by this point when I'm playing this level this would be the last haunt. These tunnels are really just creepy but again creepy in a good way. They're so heavy and cold and thick with death. It's like, why are you here? You are screwed for being in here. It'll become obvious why I'm hopping around here. You can't get to it yet, I don't think, because you don't know to look for it, but anyway, it'll become clear later why I'm doing that. I don't care to have this zombie chasing me. And here's the alchemist's lab. <gasps> That was a little far. I was almost out of range when I made that swing, and he was about to turn around. I mean, it was within parameters, but that was a little far out. You wanted to get just a tad closer, but, you know. So there's the first of two holy waters, and who knows, there might be an, a third somewhere else that I don't find, but there's at least two of those in the level. Music. It's like, whoa. Mr. Broisius. Since I went to the trouble to restore power, we will make use of the lift.
Excellent. With that holy symbol, thou art truly a novice of the order. I see that thou hast all of the items we need to perform the ritual of consecration. Meet me at my grave in the cemetery. Not until I take care of the haunt. So given the circuit he's on, this is pure assassination. Done and done. Incredibly cheap though that might have been. I do not make off with anything resembling max loot, or even most of it necessarily, which is a, a shame because the mission after next, Strange Bedfellows, you want to be equipped for warfare. Take your loot from this level into the next level. At the beginning of the next level, you don't have the leisure to purchase anything. Doing the ritual for our venerable brother is really kind of difficult if you have zombies chasing you. Hi. I have performed the ritual with all four zombies chasing me. By the way three or four, however many there, there just were. Let us begin, my friend. Funny. Wave the rosary over my tombstone. Now place the candle on my tombstone. Read the prayer of consecration. O oh, Master Builder, we ask thee to bless our brother who hath died in thy service. Forgive him the transgressions of his living days, and look with favor on his works in thy name. Plumb and plain, fire and forge, purify his spirit, and draw from him all which does not meet thy plan. Take him to serve with thee in thy home, where he may rest in peace eternal. Touch my tombstone with the holy symbol. At last, my prayers have been answered. My soul is finally free. Acolyte, thou hast saved me from eternal unrest, but I need thee to help my friends from life as well. I've prepared their final resting places for them, but I need thee to place their bodies in their graves. The first is Brother Renault. He died in the cellar of the cathedral. Please, go get his body and place it in his grave. So Brother Renault, not Brother Renault. This is Brother Martello. Please go get the body of Brother Renault and place it in his grave. It's pretty gnarly having to perform that ritual with three or four zombies chasing you. I have done it. So here's why we went dragging bodies around earlier. It's just easier. Because under other circumstances, you know, I wouldn't necessarily have... If I was playing this on normal, for example, I would not necessarily destroy every undead creature in the main chapel, so... Going back there would become a bigger chore. Because as long as all the undead in the main cathedral building are still alive, the staircase you need to use is kind of hazardous. Let me tell you. I do not know who thou art, but by thy hand I can finally depart this earth and go to the Builder's home. It is only fitting that I reward thee. 
In the winter tunnels beneath the cloister, seek ye a room with a mural on one of the walls. In the upper right-hand corner of this mural, spy out a hidden button. Press that button. Thou hast what thou wilt find there, and my full thanks. Farewell. Please bury Brother Martello. He died in the cathedral attic. So that's what I was doing down in the winter tunnels. I have to say, it's pretty underwhelming. No loot. At least I don't think there's any loot. I don't even go about bother going back for it. So it, it's like a bunch of moss arrows and some water arrows and maybe a thing of holy water. Underwhelming. It's not a thousand in loot, that's for sure. You know, I worry that there's like a whole area of this level that just out of idiocy I've never been to because we never exactly find out what happened with Brother Murris. There are readings throughout the level that sort of hint that something was wrong. I believe he died right before the eye unleashed all hell on this place, but... <clears throat> Thou has been a great help to me, friend, and I owe thee great thanks. I wish I could give thee the key to the cloister gate, but that is long lost. Take this key instead. It opens the armory in the attic. There is something up there that a crafty person like thee will find useful. I go now to my rest. Once again, I thank thee. Gonna miss him. <gasps> Hoping against hope that we don't have to enjoy the hospitality of scenic St. Yoras. Again, for the sake of thoroughness, since this is a walkthrough, let's not wake the zombie up, and let's go in here. This font will heal damage, and it'll heal... I forget how many points it heals, and then it turns off for a while, and then it turns back on again, and then it will heal more damage until you're fully healed. If you have two points of health left, you're going to be waiting a while, but free health potions. No. Yes. This uh, explosive charge does occur in the second game, and there are some misuses it can be put to. There's a zombie I'm trying to avoid running afoul with. I thought about trying to destroy him with this thing when I blow the gate open, but... Let's just get out of here. You want to be this far away, any closer, and you will take damage. That scattering stuff will hurt you. Now you have your precious eye. What do you hope to do with me? Uh, we will have... Uh, 
goals and stats coming up right here. The goals aren't very descriptive of all the steps we had to go through, but that's okay. And uh, here are the stats, so I will see everybody back for escape later.